Here's something that most engineers understand and even some builders when it comes to connecting two corners with shear panel or even exterior sheathing to create a stronger bond. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one here, just a regular 2x4 at the end. And this situation here might have three 2x4s right next to each other to provide you with drywall backing for the inside. And you can see here how the nails are going to be used to attach the shear panel to the framing stud. So here we just have one framing stud. However, most of the time we're going to have two additional framing studs with the possibility of a hold down. And a hold down is going to be used to securely fasten or anchor either a post or framing studs to the concrete foundation with the help of a larger anchor bolt. And I'll show you how that will be installed at the end of the video. So a piece of framing hardware that will use either screws or bolts to attach it to the wall framing studs or post and a anchor bolt that will be embedded into the building foundation. Now, if we're looking for something a little stronger, we can install a four by four post or even a four by six post. And a four by six post would be helpful if you have shear panel going on the inside and you're not planning on moving this framing stud over to run the shear panel through. And since we have a four by four here, we're going to be able to put more nails in it or at the very least create an area area that might not allow the lumber to split as easy. If we were to put a bunch of nails like this into a two by four, and we're going to put all of these nails in the same spot going all the way down, you can see where something like this could split the lumber, and I've seen it done before. And if that's the case, you might consider staggering the nails. And this might actually be something that the engineer will require on the building plan. So if you see staggered nails at either the bottom, top, or the sides, then that would look something like this. If we had six inches on center nailing, then we would simply move one over, come down three inches, move it over, and then have two rows of nails, one over here, one over here, and of course, we could install the staggered nails on both sides, here and here. And now for the reason why I made the video, I've seen this happen too many times, where the structural engineer might require a hold down over here and intersecting walls with shear panel. It's something I recently came across that inspired me to make the video. And that would look something like this, where we have our shear panel on the interior wall, starting over at this point here. However, it's not starting at this point over here. Now this right here is how I see it done a lot because the engineer is going to call out for shear panel running on this wall and on this wall. However, they might not provide you with a detail on how to make this stronger, especially if you're going to be using a hold down. So you can see here where there is a gap between this shear wall and this shear wall. We've got some nails going into our framing stud. And the structural connection that I'm looking at here is basically going to be just in the top plates and any nails that would be attaching the framing studs together. And all we need to do to make this stronger is to install a 4x4 here and then run the shear panel over to here. And of course, we're going to have to redo the shear panel on the other side to make this connection stronger. Stronger. You might not need to relocate the shear panel. Something like this might be okay, but why do it when all you need to do is break the shear panel on the center of the 4x4 so that instead of having an inch and a half to nail the two pieces of plywood at the break together, you'll have three and a half inches. And of course, by running the shear panel all the way over to the 4x4, like you're looking at in this example here, we're going to get an excellent connection between the two shear walls because the engineer won't always have a detail like this. And of course, you can stagger the nailing and there's no reason to notch the framing plates. You can simply notch the shear panel over the framing plates and then nail the stud over the shear panel. And you could always nail the heck out of this framing stud into the 4x4 and then put some additional nails through the shear panel on the other side if you're looking for a little more structural strength. But we're going to need something here for drywall backing. And of course, this is the main reason why most builders miss this. They frame the walls 
and then butt the shear panel up against the framing stud or the wall here. They don't let it run through and it's not that difficult to do. And believe it or not, this is something I started doing years ago. I don't know when or if I ever came across a detail that required it. It was always done the other way, which this way here just seems so much better, especially if you're going to be using a hold down. If a hold down is required for either this wall here or this wall here. And that should look something like this, a four by four post with a hold down bolted to it and then another bolt, anchor bolt, attaching it to the building foundation or to the floor framing. And even though this one here won't always be called out by the structural engineer to be located right here, the corner one probably will. This is the ideal location for the corner and is probably going to be specified with a detail or the engineer will provide you with a specific location on the floor plan. If this one here is not located here, it's over here, then you might want to point it out to the structural engineer to see if they want to move it. If not, locate it where the structural engineer on record for your building plans has it located. Because most engineers aren't going to want to go back and do any modifications without getting paid for it if they've already been approved by the local building department.